What do you think to the pink city, Eleanor? Oh, it's amazing. It's so nice. It's like so busy though. It, like we just went down the dual carriageway and there was a cow in the middle of it, just like sunbathing. It's insane. Um, but yeah, it's just it's like nothing I've ever seen. It's, it's Arriving in Jaipur, India, known as the Pink City, Eleanor visited the first village called Tilawala. Here she was introduced to a 35-year-old lady called Suswela, who explained to us that the reason why the girls standing next to her involved in the sex trade is because poverty forces them to, they don't have a choice. They are sent off to work on the highways in order to provide an income for their families. The girl in the blue jumper is 23 years old and has two children. She is currently working as a sex worker in order to provide for her family. When asked if she would allow World Vision to help give her a better future, she told us that it was too late for her and that all she was worried about was providing a different future for her children. A girl wearing a red sari came over and joined in the conversation. Her name was Karan and she was also working in the sex trade. Eleanor commented that she couldn't believe such a beautiful girl felt she had to work in this type of industry to get money. The men, on the other hand, kept their distance. Karan told us her story of how she was sent to work as a dancer and a sex worker in Bombay at the age of just 13, before returning to Tilawala with her income. She is now 19 years old and she too believes that because she hasn't had an education and general labour work doesn't provide a bit of income, she has no alternative but to continue to work as a sex worker to bring in the money that she makes. Eleanor was asked to have some pictures taken with some of the community. However, she was saddened to find out that the two girls she had been speaking to previously had left to go and get ready for work. Gifts were handed out to the children, some of whom had never even seen a balloon or a pen before. Eleanor was pleased to see the delight it brought to their faces. However, she couldn't stop thinking about Karan and her friend preparing themselves for another day of working in the sex trade. The next village we arrived at was called Bandara Sindri. World Vision staff informed Eleanor that they helped fund this shop in order to give one of the sex workers another opportunity to get them out of the sex trade. Eleanor decided to buy some cookies from the shop which she handed out to the local children in the village. We were taken to look at a typical home of a sex worker. She showed us her kitchen which had a small stove, pots and pans where she makes chapatis for herself, her daughter and her mother. From this house, we walked around the corner where we met an 11-year-old boy infected with HIV. His mother had died from the disease the year before, however, he seemed to be a very happy boy living a normal life. World Vision has been helping to pay for his treatment, and meeting him made Eleanor realise how important the sponsorship money from this year's World Vision 24-hour famine is. Today we were greeted by villagers of Nan Lapura with a traditional Hindu welcome. A young girl blessed Eleanor by pressing red paint onto her forehead, sticking grains of rice to it, tying a bracelet on her wrist and giving her a sweet to eat. It felt as though the whole village was there to welcome us. We were given red shawls as gifts before heading towards the village. Once seated the music continued and Eleanor said she couldn't believe the welcome we had been given, she felt like royalty. Today was all about how World Vision is trying to create awareness of the high risks of HIV and AIDS amongst the people living in the community. We watched a drama performance that had been organised by World Vision, where the actors performed a piece all about how easily HIV and AIDS can be spread. Lots of people came to watch, therefore it's great to see how World Vision is creating awareness about the high risks. During the day we watched a cricket match and afterwards Eleanor was asked to give a small speech. World Vision had organised for the cricket match to take place between two villages. In order to continue educating and creating awareness on HIV and AIDS, World Vision asked each team a question relating to the disease, such as how is HIV and AIDS spread? The team that answered the question correctly got to bat first. Eleanor felt privileged to be asked to hand out the awards to the winning team. After the match, we went to Nan Lapura to visit with some of the sex workers, some of whom had children. 
A lot of the girls didn't wish to be filmed and were shy to begin with, so Eleanor proceeded to hand out gifts such as pens and paper to the children. As we spent time with the community, a number of girls working in the sex trade started relaxing into our company. This girl here is 16 years old and is working in the sex trade. The woman to Eleanor's left used to be a sex worker before she realised the high risks of HIV and AIDS. She is now employed by World Vision as a peer worker, educating girls about the high risks, encouraging them to choose a different life. When it was time to leave, the girls weren't as shy or as cautious around us like they were at the beginning and were happy to pose for pictures. Eleanor couldn't believe she was standing with a girl the same age as her who lives a completely different life to the one she leads at home. Don't get me in that. We left the village and Eleanor felt sad that she had met girls the same age as her who felt as though they don't have a choice in what they do with their life. She never realised the challenges that these young girls face, as in the UK it's inevitable that children will go to school and get an education, whereas here it seems to be a luxury. Now that Eleanor has seen firsthand the outstanding work World Vision is doing, she is more determined than ever to spread the word about the World Vision 24-hour famine campaign, to encourage as many people as possible to get sponsored to give up something important for a day. Money raised will help provide alternative choices for these young girls and help turn their lives around. I'm here at the airport and I'm just about ready to fly back to the UK. I have definitely had the most eye-opening experience ever. I mean, seeing girls my age, like 16, going off to work in the sex trade has just been unbelievable. I mean, this whole experience is incomprehensible and we definitely need to do something about this. For more information, log on to www.pinkcity.org.